Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on December 23rd, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and this world weather. This was the scene here in Brantford, Ontario, as we did have blizzard conditions. Winds sustained at about 50 kilometers per hour, gusting to 90, up to 100 in some areas towards Niagara region. Hence, forwarding some blizzard and hazardous conditions. This was my view today. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mike, Daily Events Worldwide. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Stay safe out there, everybody. The roads are treacherous. Here in Ontario, we've got blizzard conditions all across Ontario, up to 90 kilometer per hour wind gust and extreme cold temperatures as the temperatures have plummeted to minus 30 with the wind chill. Much love everybody. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, hit that like button and share with your friends and family as we embark on these great changes on this earth together. This cold front slipped as far south as the Gulf of Mexico, creating quite a steamy bath event. Videos are all over the internet right now. Please check it out. The Grand Solar Minimum is upon us. Now let's have a look at space weather for today. The last 48 hours on our sun, still looking at about three sunspots that are Earth-facing right now, producing minor C-class solar flares and as well a plasma filament dancing away from the southeast region of our sun, bottom right-hand corner there, plasma loops lifting away, and as well smashing back into the surface of the sun. Look at the last 48 hours incoming. We do have an active sunspot cresting right now on the right-hand side there, bright region, plasma filaments connected to it. And as well, close to an M-class solar flare from one of these Earth-facing solar flare or um, sunspots. Looking at outgoing here, and this is where that plasma filament took off and slapped back into the sun. Watch the images right there. Another close look at the images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Put together here with daily events worldwide, keeping you aware and prepared to our space weather as it is so important electromagnetically. And it just creates everything on our planet including our wicked and wild weather that we've been seeing over the last little while stay tuned let's have a look at multi-spectrum as we do have some diminished coronal holes but again they're vertical this happened last week straight north and south vertical diminished coronal lines very interesting time indeed so the sun being relatively quiet over the last 48 hours, producing only close to an M-class solar flare, a couple minor C-class flares to talk about. Other than that, nothing thwarted our way. Another look here, 193 angstroms showing the blackened coronal hole regions, but diminished, as I said, not much building right now. Having a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral, showing the most recent CME taking off from our sun, not in an Earth-facing fashion. And we are amidst a space weather event right now. Our solar winds have been up over 500 kilometers per second today. Just showing the most recent CME outgoing. Solar X-ray flux just hopping up again into the C range. As I said, almost an M-class solar flare there. Proton flux is a slightly elevated geomagnetic activity was up to kp5 sitting at kp3 right now real-time solar wind 560 kilometers per second have to be jacked up to about 613 kilometers per second and as well noticing there that the density is down geospace magnetosphere this is showing our solar winds hitting our planet dark side of the moon is the half circle there or dark side of our planet is that half circle showing the immense pressure on our planet right now with this incoming space weather. 
Another look at our sun here. This is where we can see all of the activity shooting away from our sun the last 48 hours. Pretty sizable blast there. Outgoing. Thank God we've had some pretty large outgoing solar blasts. Not much in an earth-facing fashion. But here's a look at our Schumann resonance for today as it is a power of 10 for December 23rd, 2022, two days before Christmas. Quality of 8.2, amplitude of 10, and a power of 6. Now let's get to earthquakes here the last 24 hours, as it's been average, as we've seen about 215 earthquakes across the USGS map. The largest earthquake to report was a 5.8 earthquake here, Pacific Antarctic Ridge south of New Zealand, way south of New Zealand, <clears throat> 10 kilometer depth, minor activity through Hawaii as well, but this is the largest today. Expecting some more action into the southern hemisphere over this next week as we embark on the winter 2022. Changes happening in the southern hemisphere. Deepest earthquake through the Tonga region was a 412 kilometer earthquake yesterday. Most of the activity today has been in the Philippines and the Banda Sea. This is where all the deep earthquakes are happening right now. Expecting a larger shallower earthquake through the region, if not towards Indonesia, up into the Indian Plate. 4.8 earthquake there, Taiwan. Japan seeing a 5.0, as well a 4.9 here in Milikovo, Russia. Increasing activity up into Alaska this week. 4.1 Sandpoint, Alaska, today. These are all today, actually. Overlooking the United States and Canada, not much to report except some activity that's building towards the Pacific Northwest. As well, most recent there, 2.7 Utah. Of course, we've got the swarming at the geysers. That continues on, but nothing major to report. But all this activity around... Uh, Mount Rainier is a little bit concerning as it has been building all week long. Other than that, not too much to report in USGS. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery from around the world, as well noting the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Talking about Fuego, Guatemala, Dakono in Indonesia, Sangue in Ecuador, Popo in Mexico. Reventador in Ecuador. And that's about six volcanoes getting updated today amongst the 218 hazards right now on the Disaster Alert app. Very strong low pressure system and vast, literally affecting all of North America this week as it came in from the Pacific and roared its way eastward. Large system there. As well, looking over the Pacific Ocean, quite a big system there north of Hawaii, producing atmospheric river for the west coast of North America. If we're looking Southeast Asia and Australia, tropical cyclone and Darien ramped up to a Category 4 yesterday, but it is back down to a Category 3. As well, you've got a tropical system north Australia. Large low pressure system in the North Atlantic as well, bringing in days upon days of rain and cloud cover across Europe. Having a look here at the windy models for the next couple days as we've got extreme winds, high wind warning across Ontario and as well all up the east coast of the United States and into the Atlantic provinces of Canada. 80 kilometer per hour winds across the Great Lakes. And 60 to 70 kilometer per hour winds all up the east coast. So thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected. We're seeing large storm surge and as well some wicked winds. As that low pressure system slowly grinds its way towards the Hudson Bay and then jots eastward running into the Greenland block. And then watch for it to develop yet again over the Atlantic in the long range. It will be heading towards Iceland. Definitely things are amped up right now across the Northern Hemisphere. Welcome to winter 2022. 
going to see another large system develop in the long range. Let's have a look at precipitation forecast for the next five days. That large low pressure center across eastern Canada right now heading up into Hudson Bay. Snow lingering for the next few days and then another system heads in Tuesday to Wednesday. Also a pretty large vigorous low pressure heading into parts of southern BC and Washington. It's going to bring waves of snow across the prairies and as well another system developing Pacific Northwest. And then in the long range forecast into the new year. You've got another Gulf low mixing with a Colorado low, mixing with an Alberta clipper. Very strange jet stream indeed. A closer look here at the Northern Hemisphere precipitation forecasts. Brought to you by windy.com. Atlantic provinces set to see some wild winds and snow the next, next little bit. Tropical cyclone Darien still alive, heading straight southward. Waves of rain and mixed precipitation for parts of northern Europe, but mostly rain for central regions. Snow in higher elevations. We've also got a tropical system here to talk about. Northern Territory of Australia, as it is on land, the center of this low pressure is still over the Northern Territory and will be for the next few days right over Christmas as it heads not very far south but gains energy yet again and then heads towards the coast. So very strong low pressure center there affecting northern Australia. Very strange indeed. It's amazing how these low pressure systems can continue their velocity and low pressure strength breaking some rec records across the world over the last few years. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's update, keeping you aware and prepared to daily events worldwide. Much love, Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays. Stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Goodbye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.